Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can actually break our systems. So when two systems actually communicate over the network there's always some kind of network problems that can occur and communication between the systems may fail. So today we'll be using a tool called as Toxy Proxy, with which we will actually try to simulate these network problems. So with this let's get started. So here we have this simple application wherein we have this particular endpoint which actually communicates with the database and fetches some data. So for this we have this controller which has this particular get mapping slash block which actually uses the post repository to get all the posts for the particular block. Now I have not introduced any kind of data into the database. We just want to fetch some data by communicating with the database which would be right now empty in this case. Now to communicate with the database we need this application properties right. So we have this data source properties wherein we will be using MySQL database and we have this JDBC URL here. Now if you notice here I have given this particular port 13306 rather than the usual MySQL port 3306 because we will be having a proxy at this particular port. So now what we are going to do next is we're going to start a MySQL Docker image. So I have this Docker Compose file here wherein I have this MySQL image which exposes the port 3306 on my host itself. So it has a root password, a username and a password also. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start this particular Docker Compose. So Docker Compose up and this will now actually start a MySQL container. So now our database is running and we can access the database at the port 3306. Now next thing that we are going to do is we are going to bring up the Toxy Proxy server. So for this let me go to the command line here and I'm going to run docker run Toxy Proxy wherein I'm going to specify the network as the host network and I'm going to give it this particular port which is the Toxy Proxy server port. And with this let's actually start this particular server. So now the server has started right now we need to create the particular proxy so for this let's split this window here so now i don't have the toxy proxy cli installed on my system but rather i use the cli using the docker image that has been provided so what i do is i create this particular alias with the toxy proxy cli and then afterwards i use this toxy proxy docker image and then use the toxy proxy cli from the docker image itself now you don't have to go through all of this, you can just directly install the Toxy Proxy CLI and this will work the same as what I'm doing right now here. So I'm just creating this alias for this particular CLI and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Toxy Proxy and I'm going to now create a particular DB proxy. So for this what I've specified here, my local port is going to be this that is 13306 so this is going to be the port on which the proxy will be listening and this is the port on which the proxy will be forwarding the connections to so this is the upstream service this is basically the proxy and i'm going to give this proxy a particular name called as db proxy so with this we just created a db proxy here so now what we are going to do is let's actually start the particular application so remember we have this as 13006 this is going to be our proxy port now. So let's start this application. Okay, so application has started now. Let's just check with a curl request. So curl http localhost slash blogs. So as you can see, it has not returned us anything. So now what we are going to do, let's see how much time does it take to actually fetch actually nothing. But right now there's a round trip of actually going to the database, checking the database and then coming back. So I'm going to run this curl command with this option wherein this will actually show me the total time it took for running this particular endpoint. If you see here, it just took very few time to go to the database and fetch the records that are there. Right now it doesn't have any records, so it took this much amount of time. Now what we are going to do, we are going to introduce some kind of latency between this connection. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this Toxy Proxy CLI. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a toxic. So I'm going to add a toxic called as latency. So this is the type here, minus T latency. And then I'm giving it an attribute called as latency with 1000 milliseconds. And this is going to be for the DB proxy that we created earlier. So with this, this toxic will be added to this particular proxy right now. If you want to see all the toxics that have been present here, what we could do, you run the Toxy Proxy CLI and then after that you are going to say inspect and we are going to give it the name of the proxy. 
So this will actually tell us what are the various toxics that have been registered for this particular DB proxy. So now what is this toxicity is equal to one. So this is the probability of this particular toxic that is latency underscore downstream with a probability of one. Now we can always specify this toxicity value while adding the particular toxic. That is how we added here the latency here. We can specify the probability of applying this particular toxic. Now with this actually being enabled, what we are going to do is let's try making the curl request again. So we make the curl request here. And as you can see, it's actually right now taking more time to actually execute that particular curl request. So it nearly took around seven seconds to actually make that request because we made this particular latency of 100 milliseconds, which is at the downstream level. This is introducing some latency in the connection. And then that's the reason the entire endpoint takes a lot of time to actually return a particular response. Now, next, what we are going to do is we are going to remove this particular toxic that we added, right? So for this, we are going to run the toxic proxy command and we are going to specify toxic remove and we are going to give it the name of the toxic that we want to remove. So here, this is the name of the toxic. We are specifying this here and for which particular proxy. So with this, that particular toxic will be removed for this particular proxy. Let's actually go and inspect this. And as you can see, there are no toxics being enabled. Next, what we are going to do, we are going to add the timeout toxic. So this timeout tox will actually will give a timeout on the connections that have been made from our application. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write toxy proxy, toxic add timeout to this particular database proxy. So with this, we have added a timeout toxic to this particular proxy. We can check this using the same command that we had before that is inspect db proxy now what we are going to do let's try the curl command again so with this when we run the curl command as you can see here this particular log is increasing is getting connections being timed out because spring jpa keeps on retrying this particular connection and finally gives up so it's still retrying again and again to try to catch that particular connection and make the appropriate get call. So finally, it actually timed out and gave this particular internal server error. So this is a way that you can introduce a timeout between the connections between two systems that are connecting. Now let's actually try to remove this particular toxic. So toxic proxy CLI toxic remove timeout downstream and this will actually remove the timeout downstream so now as you can see the connection pool got recreated and we have a bunch of messages here so now if you try to make the curl request so now as you can see there is no toxic within the particular proxy so the connection goes through the database and returns us no result in this case but the connection is pretty fast right now so with this let's look at actually writing a particular test so i have this particular test that i have written here using test containers because toxy proxy provides a test container support with which you can actually have this particular proxy in the middle so i have this mysql container with this particular network and toxy proxy is also using this particular network what i'm doing here is i'm actually registering this particular property that is the data source url in which i'm creating this particular toxy proxy and after that i'm generating this jdbc url here. finally we have this particular test here so in this test what i'm doing is i'm first of all asserting that we are able to find basically empty for a find all call and this all works fine but as soon as i introduce this particular timeout in the particular proxy i should expect this particular exception so with this let's actually start this particular test so the test started and it executed successfully. So you can see this green check mark and the test worked all fine. So with this, we saw how we can actually introduce network problems using Toxy proxy. We saw how we can introduce a latency and then a timeout. Finally, to cap off, we saw how we can write a particular test to check this particular simulations. Now I keep on exploring such kind of things. So make sure you subscribe to this particular channel and give it a thumbs up for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.